March Madness on the mat. The national championships for the NCAA wrestling finishing up yesterday. And after winning the Big Ten tournament, the Hawkeyes came in a heavy favorite. All the fighting Illini could do on this college basketball holiday, that is Selection Sunday, was wait and watch. Yesterday, Illinois lost to Purdue in the semifinals, 66-56, shooting just 35% from the field. The Havoc were set to play the Columbus Condemounts tonight, but the game was canceled due to poor ice conditions. After this weekend's Disney on Ice show, the Von Braun Center staff was unable to get ice up to par for the hockey game. Huntsville Havoc season was all but over, down 2-0 in the best-of-five playoff series against Knoxville Ice Bears, and then down 2-0 in Game 3, but then the team woke up. After beating Auburn yesterday in the semifinals, the Tennessee Vols taking on Mississippi State in the SEC championship game today. The Vols wanting a win, but thanks to their solid play in the last few weeks, their postseason life really is not in question. Let's take you to Tampa. Not exactly the way you'd want to start the season if you were a defending champion. The Tennessee Valley Vipers got off to a slow start in their season opener against the Green Bay Blizzard, and they would not recover. The Flames were officially eliminated from playoffs last Friday night after the Houston and Rockford game went into overtime. Despite that... After the University of Alabama successfully courted former VCU coach Anthony Grant to take over the reins of its basketball team on Friday, today Grant made his first appearance as the Tide's new coach in a press conference. May is almost here, and that means college football fans are gearing up for the season with some spring ball. Yesterday, Gene Chizik and his Auburn squad played in the annual A-Day spring game. First quarter, the first team offense, second and seven. Junior Cody Burns hands off to Ben Tate, and he's like, I like you guys, but, you know, I just love scoring. He bursts through the middle for a 46-yard touchdown, and the offense gets on the board and make it 6-0. In the second quarter, first team offense on their own 30. Burns flips it the reverse to Terrell Zachary, who gets nothing but space and the ball. Defense gets a chance, but no, he avoids some tackles to take it all the way for the 70-yard touchdown. The Tigers open, their, open the season against Louisiana Tech September 5th. The Crimson Tide also taking part in their annual spring game. A crowd of 84,000 fans packed into Bryant Denyon Stadium yesterday to watch. First quarter, Crimson Tide with the ball junior. Greg McIlroy connects with Julio Jones for a long touchdown. Crimson up 7-0 later in the second. A little play action. McIlroy trying to show off his gun again, but this time it's picked off by Dante Hightower. McIlroy trying to make amends for the miscue and basically tackles the guy with his face. Ouch! Crimson team wins 14-7. They open the season on the road against Clemson August 30th. The Braves kept it going against the Nationals and looked to give their fans a sweep on this Easter Sunday. And the Easter Bunny and his posse making an appearance today at the game. Bottom fourth, runner at second for the Braves. Matt Diaz brings in Brian McCann for the score to put the Braves up 1-0. Next hitter, Jeff Francoeur, ends up ripping it down the right field line for a triple. Matt Diaz scores easily to put the Braves up 2. It got a little interesting at the end, but the Braves pull it out and win 8-5, sweeping the Nationals and improve to 5-1 on the season. The Braves cooled off a bit and were looking to avoid their second straight sweep today as they took on the Pirates in the last game of a three-game series. Top first, two men on. Jeff Francoeur shatters his bat but loops it for the two-run single to center off Zach Duke. The Braves would go up 2-0. Top fourth, now Braves 3-0 with two men on. Martin Prado lives in Atlanta but likes to party in Pittsburgh, cranks one deep to left center off Duke, and it leaves the yard for a three-run home run. Braves would go up 6-0, bottom six, two men on. Need some help with something? No thanks, just looking. Javier Vasquez strikes out Adam LaRoche to end the inning. Vasquez finished with eight strikeouts on the day. The final in this one is 11-1 Braves, and they avoid a sweep and snap a five-game losing streak. The Iowa State women's basketball team kept their season alive. Allison Lacey capped a furious finish for Iowa State that sent the Cyclones into the regional finals for the first time since 1999. Lacey hit a three-pointer from the top of the key with 23 seconds left, and the fourth seed Iowa State scored the final eight points in a 69-68 victory over ninth seed Michigan State. The fight to make the Final Four continued today as number two Michigan State took on number one seed Louisville. Magic Johnson in the stands wearing his Michigan State gear. Second half, Michigan State up three. Travis Walton with the steal. He gives it to Darrell Summers. Gets the slam to go. Spartans up 41-36. The Quad City Steam Wheelers kicking off their 2009 season this afternoon at against the Peoria Pirates. Let's take you to the I. Wallace Center for the highlights. And the team needs more cowbell. They get some help from some fans in the sidelines. Second quarter, tied at 21, not anymore. Terrell Fletcher with the catch and the score. Wheeler's up seven. Pure keeping it close, tied at 28. And then a rare sight in arena football. They call the run. Terrence Freeney freeing up some room in the end zone. And I do not envy those DBs. The Bulls fighting to keep their playoff hopes alive by hanging on to that final A seed in the East have lost three straight coming into yesterday's matchup versus the Hornets. 
Vinny Del Negro drawing up the perfect game plan against one of the Western Conference's strongest teams. Second quarter action. Bulls up nine. Derrick Rose finds Ben Gordon, who knocks down the three. Bulls stretching the lead. Third quarter, Bulls still up 56-41. John Salmons gets it and catches it and shoots it for the three-pointer. The Bulls just making it hurt now. 59-41. End of the third quarter, 79-51. Bulls. Gordon goes up for the three. He misses it, but when things are going well, Brad Miller with the tip in. And the fourth would be no concern for the Bulls. The Bulls win big 97-79 and continue to hold on to the last playoff spot in the East. There's Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson looked all but out of contention to grab the green jacket. Both down seven shots of the leaders, but they wouldn't go down without a fight. Lefty ended up with six birdies in the first eight holes and ended up tying a Masters record on the front side. Weather not a problem in the Goodies Fast Pain Relief 500 at Martinsville, which was seen right here on Fox 18. Points leader Jeff Gordon, always dominant at Martinsville, started off here in lap 465. Johnson leading on the restart, but Hamlin gets a good jump, gets right on Johnson's bumper, and is able to make the pass on the inside.